Shalom. Giving all praise to Yahweh. Hashem helps. Hashem Rukaku Das. I'm going to try to make this quick. I can't guarantee it's going to be quick. Let's see where the spirit leads me. Anyway, this is a video put up by Deacon Destruction Mode entitled Hebrew Israelite Camp says Christ was a sinner uh, confirmed. And um, somebody put the comment in. You should have put, you shouldn't have wrote it that way. You should have put down GMS. Anyway, I, uh, this was like two minutes ago. I, I was watching this video and I came across this comment and I, and I, and it had six, I believe it was six responses and I believe three, maybe even four of them. I know at least three were put up by Deacon Destruction Mode. And the comments that he, responses that he came up with, he, he was running. There's one, he basically said, you know, in not too many words, since you know so much, why don't you do the videos? Basically, he was running. So I come on my other computer in the other room, and uh, I pull it, pull it up, and those uh, responses are gone. They gone in a flash. But anyway, this this Deacon Hakar put so many uh, videos up. Uh, you know what? There's one right here, Assad. According to Leviticus 2, a woman is unclean when she gives birth. Is it a sin to give birth? It can't be because, well, it's, it's a law. The, uh, the, sin, the sin, I would say, but I'm going to go deeper into this. The sin, I would say, is if she went into the temple during her purification, during a period that she was unclean. If a man has a woman and she's on a period and they touch each other, I'm not saying sex, but you can say that too, but they hug or they give, she, he kisses her on the forehead and she's on a period, uh, she's uh, unclean for, for seven days. The man kissing her on the forehead or having sex with her or, you know, whatever thing he does and coming in contact with her, and I can go into the law, um, he's unclean for seven days, right? Anyway, it says, according to Leviticus 12, a woman is unclean when she gives birth. Is it a sin to give birth? Um, it's a natural thing to give birth, but the, when she's unclean, she can't come into the temple. If Yahweh Shai, when he read out of, out of the book of Isaiah 61 and said, this scripture has been fulfilled before your eyes, had he did it because he had, had he didn't have sex when he was on, on the earth as Yahweh Shai. He had all the sex and some more <coughs> when he was King Solomon. But had he come across his sister and hugged, this, hugged the sister, gave her a kiss on the forehead or whatever the case may be, ate some food that she made and she was on a period, he would be defiled, right? He would be defiled and he could not, if he had went into the temple to read Isaiah the 61st chapter, 60, it was 60th chapter, 61st chapter, um, 61. Anyway, if I'm wrong, somebody put, I'm positive it's 61. I went through it the other day. What, would he be able to go into the temple and read out of the book of Isaiah? Would that be sin? You got damn right it would be sin. You go before a dead body, your mother, your father, whatever. You are defiled for seven days. You know, there's a purification ritual, but you are, for that seven days, you are defiled. All right? It says, uh, let me read again. According to Leviticus 12, a woman is, is unclean when she gives birth. 
is it a sin to give birth? No, I wouldn't say it was a sin. It can't, it can't be because Genesis 128, the Most High tells us to be fruitful and multi multiply. Um, as a Sarek, Sarek 15, 20 says, he never com commanded anyone to sin. I'm not going to read the rest of these. I'll probably come back. Anyway, um, yeah, that's I, I, I agree with that. But if she went to the temple during the time of a, whether it be a, a male child or a female child, there's a certain amount of time for the male child and there's a certain amount of child for uh, time for the female child. That whole thing, I'm not going to go all into it. That's a whole nother subject, all right? Um, if she if she's on a period, obviously she's not she's not pregnant at that time. Can she go to the temple? No. Can her husband that slept with in the same bed kiss her on the forehead? She made breakfast for him. Can he go to the temple? No. Could you Yahweh Shai have gone in the temple uh, pursuant to uh, what was that Luke Luke four I believe it was Luke four. And could he have read that? No, because he was breaking the law, right? So let me let me uh, read this comment here. And um, this this guy, Deacon the Car, is running right now, you know. Uh, it says uh, Malach Dawad. Um, now let me let me click on Malach Dawad. Okay, he has no information. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know who he is. But he asked a, a learned, uh, he, he's not just a guy that is a Christian, let's say. Sorry, it started back up again. Anyway. Uh, anyway. And I don't mind this. I don't mind this back and forth. Because I was talking about that today when we were filming myself, uh, Apostle Gabar and Apostle Ramlab. I said, well, this is good because this does keep you on your toes. Because you got to keep going back and you got to look this precept up and that precept up. Anyway, let me read it. Let me shut the hell up and read. This is a good question for the elders. And I would love to hear their answer. But I, I guess he's talking to us and any other person call himself an elders, elder. But I would direct the same question to you, uh, uh, to you too, Deacon. In Numbers 19 and 14, let me go ahead and read that. Let me go ahead and read that. And this video that I'm doing is going to stir the spirit of... Uh, a lot of brothers, um, it's, I, I know it's going to stir the spirit of uh, Elder Yashawamba. I know it's going to stir the spirit of Apostle Kabar. I know it's going to stir the spirit of Apostle Ryan Lab and um, others, many others. If I didn't mention any name, you know who you are. It says here, say Numbers uh, 19, verse 14. This is the law. When a man dieth in a tent, all that come into the tent and all that is in the tent shall be unclean seven days. It says, let me read on. And every open vessel which have no covering bound upon it is unclean. So if there's a dead man in the thing and there's a jar that's open, you got to throw that whatever's in that jar out unless the lid is, is, is covered. It says, uh, 16 verse, and whosoever touches one that is slain with a sword in an open field or a dead body or a bone of a man or a grave shall be unclean seven days. So if you're dead, you caught a heart attack, you dropped dead, somebody comes in the house, he, he's in the presence of you, touches you, whatever the case may be, 
he's unclean seven, seven days. It says, 17 verse, and for an unclean, <coughs> and for an unclean person, they shall take the ashes of the burnt heifer of purification for sin, and running water shall be, the heifer meaning a, a heifer is, is a, a cow. Let's make sure. Baby cow, whatever, heifer, heifer. Well, why is it, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute, let me, let me, I'm sorry. Let me, maybe I'm wrong on that. Let me come back. Okay, okay, burnt. The word there is for burnt, all right? They didn't give you the definition for a heifer. But let me, let me take the word heifer. We go to heifer. That's a heifer. That's a heifer right there. A heifer. Okay. So where am I? So that's an offering, right? It says uh, 17 verse. And for an unclean person, when you read up a couple of verses up, five verse, six verses up, it speaks about if you come before a dead person, if a person died by a sword, if, you know, many ways that you can die you're still going to be unclean. It says, uh, for an unclean person, they shall take of the ashes of the burnt heifer, which is a cow, calf, cow, of purification. For what? For sin. For sin. So it's a sin offering, and running water shall be put there too in a vessel. And a clean person shall take hyssop and dip it in the water and sprinkle it uh, uh, sprinkle it upon the tent and upon all the vessels and upon the person that would that that were there and open him that touches a bone or one slain or you know you can keep reading I mean, I'm, I'm gonna keep reading uh, dead in the ground uh, 19 verse and the clean person shall sprinkle upon the unclean on the third day and on the seventh day and on the seven and on this uh seventh day and on the seventh day he shall he shall be pure he shall purify himself and wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and shall be clean at evening okay so the word that i want to pick out is let me do it this way. It says it is a purification for sin, right? You look up the word sin. Purification for sin. Now, I don't know if this word is purification. Okay, boom. The word there is chata af. Chata af. 
sin, sinful sin, sin offering sin, condition of sin, guilt of sin, punishment for sin, sin offering, pun uh, purification from sins of ceremonial uncleanness. And we read about that, right? You can read it for yourself, Numbers. Numbers 19, right? It says, if you come before a dead body, then you then you sin. All right. Which means you in violation of some law. There's laws unto death, and there's laws. Um, damn, thinking of a good example. Thinking of, we're trying to think of a good example. Sin means the breaking of the law. It doesn't mean you're going to be put to death because you broke the law. There's certain sins unto death and there's certain sins that you had to do certain things that you had to uh, sacrifice, right? So now, our Lord, right? Matter of fact, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me go back to the question. This is a good question for the elders, and I would love to hear uh, the answer, but but I would direct the same question to you, uh, to Deacon. In Numbers 19, 14 on down, I read a uh, number of verses down, which you quoted, it says that the unclean person, now pursuant to just re what we read, um, was our Lord considered unclean? Yeah. Was he to be put to death for being unclean? No. If he had came before a dead body, went into the temple to read Isaiah 61, would that be sin? You got the end right, it would be sin. And that was on the, 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 uh, the Sabbath. Didn't say that, but it was on the Sabbath because you did holy things on the Sabbath. One of the things you don't do is have sex on the, on the Sabbath because you got to go to the temple on Saturday, right? It says, uh, it says, unclean person shall be unclean seven days. You use, you use the example of the dead young man in Luke 7. I'm not going to go to that. Somebody can put it in. The dead daughter in Matthew 9. You, somebody can put that in there. And Lazarus. And, Laz, and, and the Lord did come in contact with the daughter. He said, she is sleeping. As a matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? Because Jacob gets simple. Let me actually go to this. <clears throat> and I was going to screenshot that question. And when I went to screenshot it, that's when those responses disappear. Okay, give me a second. Uh, let me go right to it. Let me try this. Let me try it this way. Maybe I hit the wrong piece up. Okay, boom. This, this is what I wanted. Matthew 9, verse 24. I've got to go up in a couple of verses at least. Oh, let's, let's deal with this. 
You know, how many times was Yahweh Shai unclean, unclean or defiled? Unclean and defiled mean the same thing. Can we can we prove that? Yeah, we'll prove that in a minute. Um, Matthew 9, verse 20. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood uh, 12 years, we all know what that means, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. She, for she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. That's where you get the word health from. Health means whole. But Yahweh Shai turned, turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole, and the woman was made whole from that hour. Now, there's another account. Either in one, I believe it's either Luke or Mark. I'm not going to go to it. Somebody can put it in there. They can help me out. Where he said, virtue, I felt virtue leave me. 23rd verse. And when Yahweh came into the ruler's house and saw the, min, uh, the minstrels and the people making a noise, Let me look up minstrel. I believe they're performers. They play instrument, sing, entertain. Let's make sure that's where you get the min the minstrel show from. Where they had niggas singing, singing, dancing. Let's see, let's see what it says. A flute player. Somebody playing an instrument. Where am I? Okay, 23rd verse. And when Yahweh Shai came into the ruler's house and saw the ministers and the people making noise, uh, he, the group that you, Jake, let's make some noise. That's what Jake actually say. That's what Jake actually say. Let's make some noise. He said unto them, give place for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. Right, the other account is in uh, St. John 11. And I might just even go to that one. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand and the maid arose. So she was dead. They said she's dead. But the Lord said, no, she's only sleeping. We're not going to get in an argument. No, she was really sleeping. She really never died. No, she died. But when the Lord said sleep, sleeping, right? Let me show you something. In the scriptures, it says if you're sleeping, it means that you're dead. I'm not going to go to it right now. It says... Uh, and and the maid arose, and the fame, and the fame whereof went abroad into all that land, because they knew that she actually died. Let me read the 27th verse. And when Yahweh Shai departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on, on us. Why did they say that? Because the flesh and blood didn't reveal it unto them, but the, the spirit of the father. Let me go to uh, St. John. St. John 11. Well, this is actually um, the account of... Uh, Uh, Lazarus, if I'm not mistaken. I just want to get to the point, bear with me for a minute. I'll start at the, um, 
John 11, verse 31. The Jews then, which were with her in the house, comforted her. When they saw Mary, they, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, she goeth unto the grave to weep there. Just bear me for a minute. I'm not going to do all this reading. Anyway, it says, uh, uh, then when Mary was come where Yahushai was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Because they knew that he performed miracles. Uh, they they knew that he, that he was able to heal. And ultimately, they found out that he was able to raise the dead. It says, uh, when, when Yahushua therefore saw her weeping and, and the Jews also weeping, which uh, came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Yahushua wept, then said the Jews, Behold, how, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, because they seen him, you know, take blind people and make them see, have caused that even this man should not have died? Meaning they were counting on the fact that the Lord would heal them with, the, with, with his power, but their mindset was oh well he's died he's dead there's nothing you can do with him now okay it's the shortest verse in the scriptures jesus wept or yahweh shai wept 35th verse 30 35th verse yeah uh yahweh shai therefore again growing in himself coming to the grave it was a it, it was a cave and a stone laid upon it yet yeah, uh our lord said take ye away the stone martha the sister of him that was dead saith the Lord saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, decomposes the word, for he hath been dead four years. The Haushai said unto, unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou would have believed, thou shouldest see the glory of the Most High. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and, and Yahushai lifted up his eyes and said, Father, so he was in close proximity to uh, Lazarus, all right? I think, and we read in Numbers about if you go into a tent and there's a dead man there, if you're in close proximity to a dead person, you don't got to touch the person, you can be unclean, defiled. So uh, according to the Lord, the, the Lord was defiled. And there was a sin offering. Like I said, there's sins unto death and there's sins that you have to do uh, ceremonies, let's say, rituals to, 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 to uh, purify you, part of purification ritual, right? And the word there in Numbers is sin. I thank the that thou has heard me, and I, and I knew that thou heardest, heardest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou has sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot, uh, with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin, Yahushai saith unto them, loose him and let him go. So he actually raised the dead that was uh, after the third day, um, his body began to see, uh, experience corruption, 
which is uh, decomposed, you know? So there was at least, what, what do we say, three times? I would say that the Lord, let's say two, two, three, that the Lord uh, was touched, was in close proximity to a dead person, which, which meant that he was unclean. So he had to perform a sin offering, right? A sin offering. Okay, let's come back to this. And Lazarus in uh, John 11, to prove that Yahweh was unclean. And a big argument with uh, Deacon Hakar is I said that the Lord is unclean. Well, he was unclean pursuant to what we're reading. Let me do this, unclean, right? Unclean. Or, it, or if a soul touch an unclean thing, okay, unclean, let's see what unclean is. What does unclean mean? Come on now. Did I click the wrong button? Bear me for a minute. Damn, what the hell did I do? Let me see something. Maybe I hit the wrong button. Bear me for a minute. Let me bring this back. Okay. I hit verse one instead of verse two. Okay, unclean. Unclean is a uh, tama, right? Unclean, impure, ethically and religious, religiously, ritually of places. You can see it says unclean, unclean, unclean. Okay, now when you come down here, it says defile. And there, Numbers 9, verse 6, and there were certain men who were defiled. What does the word defile mean? H2931 also means unclean. And there were certain men who were defiled by the by the dead body of a man that they could not keep. Oh, if you're defiled, you cannot keep the Passover, meaning you cannot, you, can, you cannot go into the temple. Meaning if your house was defiled, and, the, and we read there was a couple of cases pursuant to the law, there was the young girl, uh, Lazarus, just to name, uh, name two, that he would have been uh, uh, defiled. If he would have did that on the Passover, he couldn't come to the Passover. Or he couldn't, he couldn't have healed Lazarus or the little girl and went uh, the next day to the temple and read the, tor uh, the Torah and say, today this scripture has been fulfilled because he would have been defiled. It says, and there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man, and there's a ritual, unclean for seven days, you have to do a purification uh, ritual, which is uh, also known as a sin offering, uh, that they could not keep the Passover on that day. 
and they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. So what they say? Okay, I'm not going to read it. It says, okay, you got to keep it the, the following month by yourself. So now let's come back over here. Let me, let me, let me, uh, okay, I'm right here where it says unclean. When we go back to Numbers 19 concerning a man being unclean for seven days after being around the dead, uh, verse 17 says, and for an unclean person, they shall take of the ashes of the burnt heifer cow of purification for sin, and running water shall be put there too in a vessel. So we see here that the unclean person should do a purification ritual for sin. Uh, since you said Yahweh Shah was unclean, being around and touching dead people, did Yahweh Shah sin? So, like I said, sin is a transgression of, of the law. If you go, if you touch a woman that was on her period, you didn't realize it. You might not realize that you committed a sin. That you ha have to be, uh, 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 you know, for seven days, you're unclean. So the question was, was our Lord unclean? So here come uh, Deacon the car. What I, it was like six comments, I believe three of them, maybe four, were him. And his one of the responses that he made was, and he took it down quick. He took it down quick. Because this man, Malak Dawad, uh, cornered him. And um, one of the responses was well, something to the effect of, if you really think you know so much about the scriptures, why don't you do a breakdown or something like that. Then he said a couple other things. So I said, I'm in a, I'm in a room with the, 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 the other computer. Then I come in here so I can do, do this video because I got my Zoom hooked up with my mic. So I said, let me come up in here. And, and, I, and at first, the spirit told me, look, you better take a picture because he's going to deny that, you know, he might just take it down. And I want to take that picture and 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 board all them uh all those uh uh comments or responses went down now i'm gonna ask a question this is for you deacon the car this is for you hasad all right because i don't think deacon the car is going to answer this i don't and i don't think uh uh, uh, uh self-appointed Chief High Priest Alazar is going to answer this. Uh, but my question is concerning um, Deuteronomy 22, verse 28 and 29. Could you do a video on that and explain that? Anyway, I'm going to say shalom on to the next one.